on this episode of Monster X Radio. You just get the chills, and it's just like, it's a surreal moment. I thought the, the moment I saw one was that first time. It was so surreal. Greg's out of town. I've got hotel tickets. I've got airplane tickets. I've got hotels. Greg wasn't here. And that's actually when we first picked up on this, and he wasn't there. But this growl was happening just on the other side of the fence. <laughs> And they're, you know, they were odd, weird times of night, two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. It's not, it's the most unsettling thing to have to go, to go through this and then to be by yourself most of the time and then to realize what's truly going on. They, they weren't there the whole time, thank goodness. You know, about the time you start thinking, oh good, they're gone for good, then something happens. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to part two of our interview with Donna. Donna owns a house in Washington State near the Olympics and for several years now has had many strange occurrences, sounds, and vocals take place around her and her husband's property. Donna has also had two sightings with a possible third sighting of the probable culprit, that being Sasquatch. Also joining us again is Sasquatch researcher, Olympic Project member, and the go-to guy when it comes to field recordings and visually analyzing them in David Ellis. David has been helping Donna document, record, and analyze all of the occurrences that have and are taking place on the property. So if you're just joining us, feel free to get caught up. Look up Monster X Radio and get caught up on the first part of this fascinating interview. Having said that, sit back as we dive right into part two of this extraordinary interview. We have another clip to play here. If you guys want to give a little context beforehand, it's Voices in the Night, as it's labeled. Uh, what's behind oh. this particular? Oh. Okay, we well, we gotta we gotta uh, we gotta we gotta set this stage for this. So this is this I, is Donna's. So when we were this is this is now where we really go down that rabbit hole you were talking about. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when here we were we on the property up, before. <laughs> oh, I know. It's it's crazy. When we first got on the property and so forth, maybe working outside, Greg would go, did you call me? I'm like, no. You know, like, why would you think I called you? I'm, I'm clear down over here. And I would hear that, you know, and he'd say it multiple times, and I'm thinking he's going nuts. No, I haven't called you. You know, why would you think that? So then when we started recording, um, we kind of found out why, or we think we believe why. So in the evening, um, since I wasn't going out in the evening, Greg would take the dogs out when he was home. And he would call them. And he would call them basically the same way all the time. We had a dog named Layla at that time, and we had a dog named Bridget. And Layla always got called first. Layla, Layla, you know, because she seems to be the hardest of hearing, if you know what I mean. And then Bridget, and she would always come easier. So Layla always got called and then Bridget. And that's how Greg would call them um, every evening that he was home. And now you can play the clip and you'll see what happens. Well, we well it was a little bit more than a little bit more than yeah. that. Um, he had a specific method that was almost kind of sing-songy. It was Layla, Layla, Bridget. Yeah, that's that's With exactly that. true. And the voices yeah. you're going to be hearing doesn't mean Greg was necessarily around. I mean, we would hear this when Greg was, and we have so much proof: plane tickets, hotel, whatever. He could be clear across the other country, and that's actually when we first picked up on this, and he wasn't there. Oh, and wow. here's the okay. rabbit hole. Well, yeah. <laughs> the rabbit hole, well, we're going to play it. I think this is going to uh, yeah. set the stage for a lot of the audio coming up here. So we're going to play this. It's about 21 seconds long, so awesome. buckle up. Once again, that was looped five times, so it wasn't continuous. Just going to throw that back out there. I wanted to reiterate that uh, yep. enough so the people you know, jumping in later on in the show, uh, when this is aired, will realize that that is a looped recording. What the frick? 
And keep in mind that this is not during a time when we're awake. These things are reported for the most part. Everybody's fast asleep. It's in the middle of the night. Yeah. The recorder's just out there doing its thing. Well, we have we have more to play here. We have another clip called Layla or Lay yeah Layla excuse me. It's also looped. I'll play that real quick and we'll get some more um, feedback from the gang here. That's pretty. That's pretty intense. Yeah, that was. Um, if I can use the mm-hmm. term "big guy," that was. Um, yeah. One of the one of the larger voices there, and um, this is the one I believe that Donna uh, got really excited with me and said, "Greg's not here. Greg's out of town. I've got hotel tickets. I've got airplane tickets. I've got hotels. Greg wasn't here. She couldn't stop <laughs> telling me that <laughs> Greg wasn't there saying." <laughs> So, well, I think yeah, also because was... of the fact that that you know this is happening even when he's not when he's not there talking. I mean, it's not like you know we, we don't know what sets him off to say that or you know whatever is saying that to say that. You know, what are they close by and wanting the dogs to come out? Um, but the fact of the matter is, this is happening, um, and it wasn't in response to Greg calling, yeah. and it's pretty uh, scary. <laughs> I, I can set up the next one if you like. Yes, okay, please, ahead. please do. It's ready to roll. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so Greg is uh, out in their courtyard, and you can hear the echo. So that's kind of how I knew he was in the courtyard. And then he's calling Layla, and then there's a huge, deep growl that it, it sounds maybe even louder than Greg calling um, Layla from. And the recorder is on the deck, um, and Greg is on the other side of the house in the courtyard with the dogs. But this growl was, I'm thinking that because of so much activity that was happening by the fence, that it was just on the other side of the fence. And something growls right after Greg calls Layla. Interesting. Well, let me go ahead and play that clip here. Now, that was a, a 19 second clip looped, of course, but uh, it sounded yes. I, I, it sounded very guttural to me. Wow. Well, what does that? Yeah, uh, something huge. <laughs> <laughs> Some, something very, very big. And you know, David and I go back and forth on sounds, and we don't always agree. Um, and you know, he, you know, David, tell my favorite term from David. I will I will always remember the Macaulay Colton Library of Sound. Um, yes. Uh, and on the, and that I you know I can David just that guttural sound it reminds me of a lion it reminds me could there be a you know a lion sound mountain lion this you know something and we would go back through on this one especially I would because I was just like oh my gosh it just you know sends chills up because it's so close if I can identify it as a, identify it then I'm okay um, then I can deal with things we went through all these sounds both visually I spent a lot of time on this one and nothing's matching up with it that we found. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you what, right off the bat, that sound there, uh, you know, a lot of individuals, Donna, and I know David could tell you this as well, a lot of individuals will tell you that when they hear something like this, even in person, when they're in person, whether they've had a sighting or not, in some some cases, I can think of a few that have and have heard something similar, they described as like a bear, lion, roar. So, right. yeah, and so... You know what? What do you compare that to? You can't. Right. There's nothing to compare it to. And until this very minute, now, until you just said that, I didn't realize other people had heard that type of sound with that. So that's interesting because oh, yeah. I've not heard yeah. that. Okay, so let's um, back up the truck just a little bit. Um, Donna said something really important. The Macaulay Library of Sounds, you need to use a disinterested third party that catalogs sounds so you actually know that they are real the people that record those have visual sightings. You know, if they see a coyote vocalizing and record it for Macaulay Library of Sound, it gets a file name, it gets a file number, who recorded it, who was there, all the details about it. You can go on the Internet and look and find bear growls, and you could hear something like this, but it's manufactured. It's not real. Bears don't growl like that. 
and no. you have to go back through the Macaulay Library of Sound to verify what bears actually sound like and how they do growl and how they do make sounds. So you don't necessarily have to take somebody's opinion or say, well, I heard it on the Internet. Um, the Internet is not a source. Sorry, it's um, it's party. It's not a disinterested third party. So uh, that's why I am kind of a stickler on the Macaulay Library of Sound I know that it's coming from a documented source. And documented yeah. source is, is the key thing there. And, and to tell you the truth, they have every sound you can ever think of. And, and we get that up regularly. We're trying to ident- identify something. That particular library is often updated. It's a, a living, yep. breathing, you know, audio collection. And it's fantastic. And it's science-based. There's no yes. messing around there. And it, it is actually fundamental when it comes to uh, if you're a fan of audio, listening to audio, recording audio, it's fundamental when it comes to Sasquatch research. Absolutely. Uh, and once again, kudos to David Ellis here because I had no idea it existed until he told me. And I was my mind was, you know, like volcano blown when I discovered that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I've, well, I've heard it so many times I just want to go, ugh. You know? You know, what's interesting is that uh, on their sounds now, they are providing um, spectrograms. So it's bioacoustic research. Now. Mm. So it's not just the audio. You don't just hear it. You get to see the, the sound print. So you can compare your sound print to their sound print. And I'm so thankful for yeah. that because that saves us time. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, let's get into this next clip here. It's called Calling Layla. 12.15 mm. a.m. It's condensed, uh, I, I believe, for the amount of time, but uh, this is an interesting clip all by itself. So I'm going to play it. Yeah. And, that, and, yeah. Go ahead, David. Yeah, this, is, um, this particular uh, individual said Layla numerous times um, throughout a short period of time, and that's why I say it's condensed. You know, rather than taking three minutes to run this, um, we're, we're going to get it done faster. But the point is, is that it said it numerous times. Well, I'm going to go ahead and play that. It's about 28 seconds long, so here we go. Okay, important question here, guys. Important question is, uh, this is crazy to me, uh, and I've heard a lot of this stuff, but it's still crazy to think about what's going on here. Mm-hmm. This audio, these audio recordings, it, it's a sort of, it seems to be, to me, a sort of mimicry. Is that what you guys are thinking, or, I mean, are you guys going down that road? What's going on with these recordings and these sounds? Well, that's what that's what I think. I think it's, they're mimicking. I mean, if you notice, there, Layla, if you... If, you know when kids first learn to talk, they always pick out the the, the, the simpler words. And I always go this, and I'll, I'll bring this up, and I know we were going to bring it up, David. But the Layla, you know, they get that tongue in there, the Layla, 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 or the mama, mama, mama type of thing going on. And then if you notice on the the recording of Layla, Layla, Bridget, that one, the Bridget is a harder thing to say, you know, when you're first learning how to speak, you know, for kids and so forth. Mm-hmm. And so I think you're mimicking them. And when, and when I um, listen to this, to me it sounds like when, I, when David and I were talking about this, I finally said, you know what, David, it sounds to me almost like it's a deaf person trying to talk, um, especially that Layla, Layla, Bujot, because I just think it's, you know, this, this one that we just heard with the Layla, 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 it's almost like it's trying to, it's, it's fun to say, Layla, Layla, Layla. You know, I don't, I don't know what else to say. Um, but, you know, I do believe they were mimicking. I think they were mimicking other things. I think mm-hmm. Greg was hearing his name because something was out there trying to either pronounce his name or something. But we kept picking up the dog's names. Um, and, you know, the ones that were playing, yeah. they're not the only ones. I mean, we're, we're and, they're, you know, they were odd, weird times of night, 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, midnight, whatever it was. They weren't when anybody was awake. And, and so many times it wasn't when Greg was around either. Well, yeah. it was after numerous times hearing this that I finally confided with Donna that I had recorded in 2000-something that called my dog from the woods. 
um, on another in another area. That's right. Uh, not this one, and I have that recorded as well. So I was aware that this is possible. So when we recorded it here after numerous times, I finally told Donna, well, <laughs> this isn't the first rodeo on this. I don't like to make it public because it, it is down the rabbit hole. It's, you know, there's a lot of assumptions here. And we're well aware of that. We're not proclaiming that this is Sasquatch. We're just saying that it's highly suspicious in nature, and maybe that's a maybe that's mm-hmm. an answer. We don't know what the answer is, but we're that's what, that's, we're, that's we're willing to like throw it out there. Right, yeah. and that's one thing that I pointed out before that I really like about working with David, and and I think it's a great example to do. He never led me down anything. He never mm-hmm. told me about his experiences or anything else like that until after something was said and something I have had to learn the hard way. Um, so, you know, when we had the mimics, he didn't tell me until we had had, like he said, quite a few. And then he told me his experience and shared his reporting. And this is truly down the rabbit hole. I mean, we thought the wiki whippy was, but now you have something that mimics you. I mean, that's, I mean, yeah. wow. Yeah, Go exactly. Ahead, Go ahead, Julie. Sorry. Well, I'm just saying that that shows, um, some intelligence there and you know if it's doing it weeks after that other recording or whatever in the middle of the night then that's like memory retention as well and and that's that's yeah. kind of interesting i think these things are highly intelligent yeah i agree i mean you have to agree and listen we don't have it's not as if eric clapton's down there at the end of the property singing layla <laughs> this, this, this isn't <laughs> no Oh, leave it you know, but, but, Got the funny <laughs> But it wouldn't surprise me at this point. <laughs> well, my my point being is it's it's not a perfect Layla, but it's very very wow. similar. Oh, you, can you know, what it is. and yeah. yeah, and what I'm hearing is it, you know what I'm what I'm thinking in my head because I've seen this played out in other David knows this well better than I do, but, <laughs> but I've seen. In other uh, scenarios similar to yours, Donna, but not not near the same, is a sort of predictability where, uh, and we'll go down this rabbit hole a little bit, where you have these scenarios where Sasquatch are in an area for a lengthy time. I don't necessarily call it habituation. I personally not a big fan yeah. of the word me personally, but but you have they're in an area long enough that they hear uh, these names and these voices, and then they, they, uh, from the recordings I've heard from personal experience, it's a weird thing, you know, where they almost pick up on it and repeat it, and this is kind of what I'm hearing here, because this is, this isn't like a week's worth of recordings, this, you know, it's not like this just happened one night, this is a a lengthy time. No, No, like I said, we recorded for just about, well, about three years, um, Amazing. You know, at night after night, and and so and you know it's funny you say that too because what would happen is we would record and we'd have a bunch of activity and then there were times of the year that it would be quiet for like a couple of weeks and then all of a sudden the attack activity would come back and so I do think that there is a uh, a, a you know kind of a circuit they do um, around you know they they weren't there the whole time thank goodness you know about the time you start thinking oh good they're <laughs> gone for good then something happens. I, I think wow. you're right. I don't. I'm not a big fan of that word, by the way, habituation either. Yeah. No, I yeah. prefer yeah. to call it an intersection because it's uh, where humanity and the something else intersect. It's not that we have any kind of control or or have made them more human-like that they feel comfortable being around us. Quite the contrary, but they do know how to um, maneuver in and out, and every once in a while. Our uh, consciousness intersects with um, their being here. Well, I honestly, I, I do believe it's a living, breathing thing. So that's, yeah. I, I've, from what I've seen, that's what it is. Okay. Well, you know what? Uh, this is fascinating to me, but I want to get to the next clip here. Sure. Uh, I'm, yeah, it, I don't think it's Greg. That's how it's labeled as it was sent to me. What's the context behind this particular clip? Okay, yeah, uh, Well, there's a certain structure, like Donna had mentioned, that we kept noticing over and over, and maybe these uh, clips will kind of drive that point home. Um, But uh, we listened to this audio quite a bit and came to the conclusion that that as far as um, the talking goes, there's there's some maybe not inability, um, maybe they hear differently than us, 
Um, these are just kind of things that we're throwing spaghetti at the wall, but they don't talk exactly like us. Um, they, they they do it a little bit differently, and it, and it kind of sounds like it's got a nasally tonality to it, similar to somebody that may be hearing challenged. Well, here we go. About oh, twenty second clip here. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, David, I, I absolutely uh, hear what you're saying. Donna, uh, what's your thoughts on this on this particular clip? You know, um, you know, David will tell you that I sit there and, and you know we, we go back and forth on on different things and and one of the things um, about a lot of these clips, you know, you think that Greg was around or something like that, or maybe that was um, you could hear that through the wall or something. You know, the recorders outside. We you know recorded our voices a couple times from in the house. But that's not coming from there either, and it's coming from someplace out in the woods, close by, and it just sounds there. There's a there's a quality there that's just not like ours. I don't know how else to explain it, and I mm-hmm. don't know what it is. Wow, absolutely. There there is a a, a quality to all of these particular recordings, uh, and uh, some of these recordings I know for a fact, and we're going to get to some of them down the road here that uh, other individuals have recorded or recorded something very similar. So mm-hmm. this isn't totally uh, a one in a, you know, one-time thing. And I guarantee, Donna, um, you're probably going to get some more recordings like this on your property down the road. And I, I'll tell you what I hope to, because I plan on heading back <laughs> out there. <Yeah. laughs> um, no, no kidding. <laughs> no kidding, yes. Yeah, that, well, why not? <laughs> Um, having said that, um, we're going to get into some more audio here. Uh, this audio piece coming up uh, is labeled uh, Two Vocals. And um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to play it, and then we, we'll get the, uh, the story behind the two vocals. Okay, first off, I really like this particular piece of audio, but to play devil's advocate, why is this not an owl? It, it doesn't have an owl signature, and but oh. it does have the tonal tonality of the other um, voice structure that we're talking about. So again, um, you can you can foster that opinion, but then I would uh, challenge you to find the owl that uh, that, yeah. that is like that. Visually. Yeah, yeah. And visual, well, visually yeah. like that. And we, uh, Yeah, we've gone through yeah. that, too. David and I had that same conversation numerous times about this one. And he'd always refer me to but the it, visual part, and it, it's different. Oh, it, it is. And I have, I have visually looked at this particular piece of audio just recently. Uh, yeah, uh, if you're not visually – things a lot of times will sound similar to other things. But I'll, even, even to the ear, you know, I've been around a lot of owls. It doesn't – sound like an owl to me in, in all its dexterity. I mean, it just doesn't, but I, no. can't, I couldn't rule that out. But when I look at it visually, yeah, it, it's, it's quite different. Now, um, I'm going to leave myself an out because there's always uh, room for error. And if somebody can produce the owl that makes that particular sound, then, the, then this one would come off the table. So it's just as simple as that. So right. I, all I can say is that to my experience or to my research, it doesn't match, but that doesn't mean that somebody hasn't recorded something visually and saw an owl do that. So, you know, uh, all of these are subject to um, further scrutiny, and they're, they are not the final. So we just need to make, make that clear, too. And to that, I say good luck when you look at all this audio and everything. <laughs> good luck. Uh, so, I was always the one. Please, please tell me it's something else, please. You know, yeah. I, I would rather it be something else than than right. what we're what yeah. I'm doing. So, please tell me those hairy legs I saw in that abdomen and the head and oh. the body was not a Sasquatch. It was a very big transient uh, uh, person. <laughs> so, this next clip is labeled familiar voice. What's the uh 
What's the context behind this one, and why was it labeled that way? I can answer that. I labeled it. Yes, these. go ahead. Uh, it's yeah. after we've had our discussion about the tonality thing and our um, our uh, realization that we may be dealing with something that um, m- may be hearing challenged or hears differently, but it's um, that same tonality. So that's why I put that. This is a familiar voice. Well, I'm going to go ahead and play it. It's about 14 seconds here, so here we go. Yeah, obviously not familiar to me, but familiar possibly to <laughs> well, the tone, you guys. The tonality is the tonality is familiar, but I haven't a clue what it just said. Yeah. So and wow. the interesting thing, you know, Greg or David talks about how um, how it could be hearing challenged. It could be vocally challenged too. You know, we you know you see these dogs right. saying "I love you" exactly. and of course and stuff like that. It could be vocally challenged. Yeah. The other interesting yeah. thing that. Um, and this is, again, going down the rabbit hole, but an article that I came across after hearing that, because now we're hearing a little bit higher pitched sounds. Um, you know, they're a little bit higher, and we're hearing low ones, and so we think there's multiple out there. Um, but the higher pitch ones also led us to an article that came through just about that right time. Um, well, actually, it was a, a ways later that I, I found and sent to David, and, and we talked about it, too, and we have no idea. I mean, this is all speculation. We have fun speculating. But how uh, Neanderthals, they, the, the, the way they're, they were shaped and stuff, I'd have to go back and find the article. And how they uh, feel like that their nasal cavity and stuff was shaped, that they feel like they had a higher pitched tone than what we talk with right now. Which I found interesting because now we have some higher pitched ones. You know, is it, you know, large guys, small guys? You know, who knows? I mean, but it's still, again, we're having those mumbly voices that I would, was talking about in the beginning. And you just don't know what's going on or what they're saying. I know, I know, Julie, you had uh, maybe yeah. an input here or a question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because, you know, whatever it is out there has heard you guys calling for the dogs. And let's say, for example, this this thing is on other people's property down the hill or up the hill or wherever, and they're hearing them calling their dogs or their children and they are calling out what they're hearing someplace else as well. You see, that's, that's a great it point. Sound, it may not sound familiar to yeah. you, but if the neighbor up the road or somebody down, you know, five even five miles, because five miles to these things is nothing. You know what I mean? They can right. traverse a, a lot of ground quickly. So that might sound familiar to somebody else. You just don't know it. Yeah, so if you're listening Absolutely. and this sounds familiar to you, <laughs> let us yeah. know. Yeah, Call Shane and Julie. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and, and that's yeah. an that's an excellent point. I mean, they're picking up sounds from all over, but I still think it's very. Um, it shows their intelligence, though, mm-hmm. when they're at our property and calling our dogs. Um, yeah. Well, or, not just their and, not just their you know, how intelligent they are, but if this is indeed Sasquatch, uh, which I lean towards big time. Um, it, the, you know, you don't learn a sound. You learn a s- sound uh, over uh, hearing it and repeating it. And so, you know, Greg and yourself, your husband, going out there and calling the dogs repeatedly means that something's in the area listening repeatedly. So you have this, you have this scenario where something's mm-hmm. in the area a lot. At least in my my head, in my opinion, as as to what I'm getting at. Oh, exactly. And 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 once you realize that, and when. I, you know, I know the exact point. I, you know, the, I got the chill moments when I was like, oh, my word, I know exactly where they are at the yeah. exact moment the first time. And you just get the chills. And it's just like, it's a surreal moment. I mean, just as much as I thought the the moment I saw one was, you know, and I, I've seen them twice for sure, once possibly part of one a sec, another time. But that first time it was so surreal. I mean, it's just, it's just out of your realm of, it's mind blowing, like like you said, yeah. Shane. Pew. So it's it's it's, yeah. it's crazy, and then you start adding all this up together. Have you ever heard of the 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 frog and the and the uh, pot theory, the boiling water, where you know you yes. can throw a, a frog in the the pot and slowly heat it up, it, it will boil to death. But if you throw it right in there and and it's boiling, it'll hop right out. Well, this is kind of like this, you know. If I had the first day had been all this was slammed on me, the first day I would have been out of there with the 
with the moving truck <laughs> right away. But this this happens over a period of time. You know, it's not like it happens every day or or everything like that. This is over a period of years of some of this. It, it's been an ongoing saga. It's been an ongoing story. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to play this next clip, and then we're going to end this particular session. I'll call it a session because <laughs> I'll tell you what, you know, we can talk for days and hours. But we'll yeah. end um, our conversation this evening with this particular clip, and then we'll pick up next episode with the some other clips and some other feedback from you guys. But we're going to delve into this particular clip called Family Disagreement. I think it's a great mm-hmm. clip to end <laughs> with. <laughs> yeah. So but, but before I play this, and I'll tell you what, folks, if you're listening to the show, there's some amazing audio coming up and some amazing context to, to some of the audio that's going to be coming up in the next episode. You have to stick around and listen to it because it's – even further down the rabbit hole, in my opinion. But having said that, having said that, this clip here, I think, is a perfect clip to end this particular uh, episode with. It's called "Family Disagreement." And Donna, I'd like your input. And David, before I play this clip, I'll start out with you, Donna. You know the clip. Uh, can you give me a little context, and then we'll have David jump in here? Well, like with most of our stuff, we um, this family disagreement. Um, we believe it's more than more than one. Um, this is also something that's picked up in the middle of the night. So it's not like something I heard in person, so to speak, like like the voices going down that ravine. This is something that um, happens in the middle of the night while I'm sleeping oblivious, thank goodness. Um, but it's close enough to the reporter after putting it out that we catch it. So I, I, I'm, I'm kind of glad <laughs> that I don't hear it in person. <laughs> David? Well, it's just uh, one of those clips where, uh, you can kind of visualize what's going on. I mean, you don't have to be able to yep. speak um, this particular language to to notice that somebody said something to somebody else and they said something back, and they weren't quite in agreement with what the first person said. So if you can think of a, um, a male female scenario, you may may hear what I'm what I'm alluding yeah, they're, to. they're having they're they're having their five year disagreement. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> All right. Good stuff. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna play this 33 second clip. Here we go. And it's loop. It's loop five times. Oh. Oh. is kind of a, a growly, deep voice, uh, a response, and then I'm kind of thinking that the male responds one more time with a huge wood knock. Yeah. And then everything We're knocking went, on something. Then yeah. everything, and then everything went quiet. <laughs> That's so, about, that sounds about right for our house. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. right. Re- and I real quick. You, bam. Yeah, bam. But, you know, Obviously, as you alluded to, that was looped. It wasn't continuous. We'll, we'll make that known that it was looped. But, yeah, there's a lot going on there. And then you hear the that thud or that knock come in there, and then there was almost like dead. That was it. That was it. All that. The gavel no came more, down. The gavel no more came down. <laughs> We're all it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like no, that in my no. household. Well, yeah. yeah, it doesn't, yeah. Not in mine either. No, and not in ours. I, no, no. But, I mean, amazing. Ama- I mean, some really tremendous amount of work has gone into obtaining these clips to recording. There's been a lot of time in obtaining these clips. Some things to note here that I think is very fascinating, and I can't wait to do a part three here, but some things to take away that I think are fascinating is, Donna, these scenarios I found over many, many years historically uh, talking here, these sort of scenarios, these sort of um, occurrences happen periodically around the country. You know, uh, we can look at some of the more famous ones. But one of the things, there's a couple of things I took away from, you know, our talk here. Empty house for four years. There's an apple orchard close by. 
you guys are moving in, you have pets, and, and something's in this area that seems to be mimicking signatures of voices uh, that's not going anywhere per se anytime soon. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff developing and that has developed. It's truly a unique scenario, uh, but yet the sort of stuff I think has happened in the past or and whatnot, but not maybe not to this length of time per se. But you, fortunately here, you managed to reach out to uh, some amazing individuals like David Ellis and Derek Randalls, and you brought David in and kind of uh, took over the audio aspect and the casting and, and kind of showed you some cool things and, and research at its finest, in my opinion. But what do you take yeah. away? Uh, you know, what, do you, what, what have you taken away from your experience, and when's it going to stop? Is it going to stop? Do you want it to stop? You know, th- th- that's interesting. Um, you know, what do I take away? Words. You know, one of the things is that I would not be where I'm at today um, without people like you and David and so forth um, and hearing other people's stories. And one of the things I want people who are listening who may be going through something like this and stuff like that to feel more comfortable with it. And that's what David's really helped me and you guys, too, have really helped me to do mm-hmm. because it's not it's the most unsettling thing to have to go, to go through this and then to be by yourself most of the time. Um and then to realize what's truly going on. Um, mm-hmm. Do I want it to stop? <laughs> we, I don't live in that house anymore. Um, it got to be where I couldn't walk outside and you're totally on edge. Um, we have the house still. Um, we, uh, you know, I was just there this last weekend and so forth. But when you, when you can't relax in your own home and you have this going on and, and I was, some people might handle it better than I did as far as the relaxing part, but you're always on edge because about the time that you seem to relax, something happens. Um, and I don't know if they sense that or, or something like that or you're just not prepared for it. But after, you know, three years, I, I had to make a choice and, and, and I would just, I was, it was encompassing too much of my life. I wanted to be able to enjoy other things. And, and that to me was very important. But, you know, looking back well, now, you know, it's a lot easier to talk about and deal with. And we didn't talk about it back then. You know, we didn't go and, and, and you know, go on shows like this, like your show. Um, for the simple fact, um, we were still researching, and we still are researching there. And, um, you know, want to respect the privacy of everybody concerned. One of, the, one of the things that was really important for me, and I hope I made my point come across quite clearly to Donna, was that, I can get in my car and drive away. You will not be able to do that. And at any point in time, you say, we're pulling the plug. This is too much. I don't want to do it anymore. We're done. No questions asked. Um, thank you very much for what you, know, what you have done for the research community. It's been, in, been more than uh, I could ever hope for. So I was always trying to tell Donna that, look at this, you know, your your sanity is worth more than um, the discovery process. So I, I, I never um, uh, asked Donna to put out the recorder uh, more than just a, that one single time, and she took the bull by the horns and ran with it. But there were times where she couldn't couldn't put the recorder out there. It was just like she said, too much. And I, I tried not to to bother and and become um, you know pushy that uh, that just wasn't our way this was a discovery well, process yeah, and, and, and and david was really and good about human that because, yeah. yeah and then david was really good about that and i would still record but i got to a point where i couldn't listen to it anymore because mm-hmm. i would think everything was fine and, and nothing was around and then something would happen on the recorder and david was just doing it after a while otherwise everything i i would i would listen to before and then you know david and i had a process of getting him all the information and so forth um and that's real important to know because, and he wasn't pushy and he wasn't, he let me do it on my own comfort level. And I think that's very important with anybody dealing in a situation like that. And the thing is, you know, as far as pulling a plug and not, and not setting up the curtain or something, that doesn't make it go away. That just means you're being right. oblivious. And, and for yeah. me, part of, part of my makeup is if I find out that it was a coyote sound, an owl sound or this or this, Amen. I mean, that would be great. But it's interesting to me to find out what the sounds are and what can be, um, what we can identify and what we can't identify and what's actually going on. To me, that was important, not to sit there and try and say and push 
a category into something that it shouldn't be pushed in. I'm always open, and I'm always open to any interpretation of the sounds, and if you think something's different, let me know. Let me just say that this isn't the end, folks. You're, uh, we, we got a lot more audio to go through, and, and very, uh, well, once you hear the context and the backstory, mm. uh, it's it's weird. It's weird, but yeah. in a lot of ways, in a lot of ways, as the story unfolds, it makes a lot of sense to me. I think it may make sense to some of you viewers. However, it is uh, it, it is weird. <laughs> I'm not going to lie; it's weird, and it's uh, it's. Uh, but there's a lot of thought put behind some of the, some of the stuff we're going to talk about on this upcoming uh, episode. But I will tell you, stay tuned because uh, mm-hmm. if you think you've heard it all, you haven't, and uh, mm-hmm. it's going to be it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. I'm enjoying this. I and it's uh, truly truly intriguing. And so, having said that, hey, listen, folks, I thank you for joining Monster X Radio. Listen to our guest here, Donna, and, and David else jumping on here and sharing this unfolding story, something that uh, it's very intriguing, very, I'm very passionate about because uh, I, know, I know Donna personally, and she's an amazing individual. And, of course, my good friend and my, my peer and somebody I look up to, David else is a part of this, and that's good, good. And I want to thank Julie Ranch here as my co-host this evening, but, hey, Folks, we're going to be back soon. Look forward to what's going to be coming down the road. Tune in next time. Thank you for listening to Monster X Radio. You all have a great evening. Thank you for joining Monster X Radio.